Hey, what's going on guys? Happy New Year and welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So a lot of you guys have been asking me to do an updated guide for the Luck Fox Pico method of running the PP Pwn PS4 jailbreak on the PS4 to jailbreak your PS4 using a Luck Fox Pico. So that's what we're covering here in this video because the installation method has changed from the previous guide. It's actually a lot easier now to set up an install. Not only that, but it also has some additional features like a web server built in for running the payloads as well as being able to adjust the exploit settings uh, from the web server as well. So quite a few new updates made to this version. So of course the PP Pwn exploit for the PS4 is the latest jailbreak for the PS4 that works on 9.00 up to 11.00 firmware, which you can find in the system settings on your PS4. You can check your system software version. So if you have a firmware within that range, you'll be able to jailbreak it using this method. Now the method uses a vulnerability in the way that the PS4 handles the PPPoE network protocol, which requires another device connected to the PS4 through an ethernet cable to actually send the required network data to jailbreak the PS4. So it requires another device to run the jailbreak on the console. So this is where something like a Luckfox Pico device comes in because it's a little Arduino board that you can connect and power from the PS4 itself and it will automate the jailbreak for you so that you don't have to manually plug it into a computer or another device to run the jailbreak. So that is the advantage of this. Not only that, but the Luckfox Pico is one of the cheapest devices you can get your hands on to automate the jailbreak for the PS4. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at how to set this up. So first of all, you need to get your hands on a Luckfox Pico device. Specifically, the ones that are supported on this project are the Luckfox Pico Max, uh, which currently retails for around $15. Then you've got the Luckfox Pico Pro for about $13. And then also the Luckfox Pico Plus for about $10. That's the version I have right now. You want one that has an Ethernet port so that you can connect it to the PS4. Uh, there is also the Luckfox Mini B, which is supported by this project. However, it does not have an Ethernet port and it's mainly used for actually installing internally in your PS4 as a mod chip to run the jailbreak, which I have covered in a previous guide, which I'll leave linked down in the video description. It's a pretty cool project if you want to have it integrated into the console itself. But in this case, we're just going to be using the normal installation method of connecting it to the PS4 with an Ethernet cable. Okay, so taking a look at the actual project itself here, we've got pppone-luckfox. This is it right here. So you can see the supported boards here. We've got the requirements. We also need an Ethernet cable, USB Type-C cable to power the Luckfox Pico, and a USB drive for loading Gold 10. That's only required for the first time that you load the exploit. So that's only required for the first time use. And a PC slash laptop for configuring the Luckfox just when we're actually installing uh, the exploit code onto the Luckfox Pico itself. Okay, and then we've got all of the supported versions. So if we head over to the releases section here, so if we scroll down here, we can see all of the releases. We'll show all assets. So these are all of the different pre-built images here. If you're using a Luckfox Pico Plus or a Mini B, you're going to want to download one of these Pico Plus images. And of course, if you're using a Pico Pro or a Pico Max, you would want to download one of these. And you want to download the one that corresponds to your firmware version. So I'm using a Pico Plus on firmware 11.0 on my PS4. So this would be the one I would want to download. If you don't want the web server functionality, uh, because these versions do not contain the web server, they just run the exploit, uh, which can be handy depending on, you know, how you want to use it. But generally, I would recommend going for the web server version because it has more features and the ability to customize the settings. So we're going to go ahead and download this one in my case for the Luckfox Pico image for the web server for 9.0 up to 11.0 because the web server allows you to pick your firmware. So that way you only need one build image no matter what firmware you're on. And of course, if you're using an SD card for the storage, then you can use this version as well for the Pico Plus. But generally, I would recommend using the internal flash storage, which does not require an SD card, which is this one here, or again, this one here for the Pro and Max version. So once we get that downloaded, there are a few other things that we also need to download. So the project here, if we scroll down, will give you links to the SOC toolkit and this tutorial here, which will bring you over here where you want to download the driver. So download the driver assistant. And we also want to download the SOC toolkit for flashing the Luckfox Pico. Okay, so once we have everything downloaded, we want to extract it all out to our computer here. So I'll call this Luckfox underscore image. And I'll take the Luckfox project that we downloaded, the one that has the web server for the internal flash storage. 
and we'll extract that out here with 7-zip to our folder. So we've also got the SOC toolkit and the driver assistant. So you're going to want to make sure you install the driver assistant first. So right click and run it as administrator and then run anyway and install driver. And then once it says that's OK, you've got the driver installed. We can then run the SOC toolkit, which I would also recommend right clicking and running as administrator just to make sure that it has full permissions. And then we should be good to go. So then it's going to ask us for our chip uh, list. So I believe if you have a Pro or a Max variant, it should be RV1106. And if you have the Pico Plus like I do, then it would be an RV1103. So I'm going to select RV1103 and click OK. I think the Mini B is also a RV1106. Uh, in this case, it's an RV1103 for the Pico Plus. And we're going to select USB up here. Now, nothing's showing up here because we don't have our Luxbox Pico plugged into the computer yet. So you're going to want to grab yourself a USB-C to USB type A cable, plug one end into your Luxbox Pico. So your Luxbox Pico should have a boot button located on it somewhere. You want to hold down that button as you plug in the USB cable into your computer and keep the button held down until you see mask ROM show up in the USB section here. So in my case, it's mask ROM 110. So you want something like that to pop up in this box which means that you have successfully put the device into its program mode and it has been detected by the SOC toolkit. That's what you want right there. If it doesn't get detected, make sure that the USB type C cable that you're using to connect it to the computer, make sure that is a data cable because there are some that, are, that just give you power and do not also provide data. So you will not be able to uh, get it to show up. So if it's not working with one USB cable, try a different USB cable until this pops up you do have to have that boot button held down as you plug it in in order to put it into its program mode. So all we need to do is click the search path and we'll select our Luckfox image folder that we extracted our image file into and we'll select folder. It says, do you want to reload? We'll say yes. And there we go. That puts all of the files in here. All we have to do is click this box up here to select all of the files. And then we're just going to select the download option. And that is going to essentially program our Luckfox Pico with this image. Okay, and at the end, it should say download is done. So we have successfully programmed the device with our image, with the exploit. So we should be good to go here. All we need to do is close out of the SOC toolkit. And we can now unplug the Luckfox Pico. Now, the other thing we need to do is put the gold hen payload on a USB drive. So if we head back over to the project here on GitHub, in the code section, We've got the USB drive folder. In here, we've got the goldhen.bin file. We're going to click on that and download the raw file. And once you have that downloaded, we're going to copy it over to a USB drive. So I'm just going to go ahead and get a USB. We need to make sure we format that USB drive in preferably XFAT format here. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Make sure you back up any data before reformatting it. And then copy the goldhen payload to the root of that USB drive. Do not put it inside any folders. Okay, so with that, we should be able to eject that USB drive and plug it into our PS4. We're also going to plug in the Luxfox Pico to a USB port in the PS4 as well to power it. And then also plug in an Ethernet cable, one end into the Luxfox Pico, and of course the other end into your PS4's Ethernet port. Okay, so once we're on the PS4, we're going to head into our settings. We're going to go to our network settings, set up an internet connection using a LAN cable. We're going to choose custom. Then we're going to select PPPOE, enter the ID as PPP for the user ID and PPP for the password as well. And then we'll click next and then automatic, automatic and do not use a proxy server. From there, if we head to system, system information, you can see we have an IP address of 192.168.1.2. So what we want to do is go to the web server now by going to the internet browser on your PS4. And from the internet browser, we're going to go to 192.168.1.1. Not 1.2, but 1.1, which should be the IP of the web server that's running on the Luckbox Pico itself. So here we have a few options. We can run the exploit here. We can shut down the Luckbox Pico. We can disable the Ethernet port here. And then we've got payloads for 9.00 and 11.0. And then also we've got the config. So this gives you your configuration, your firmware. So we're going to select the firmware, first of all, what firmware your PS4 is currently running on. So it runs the correct 
version of the exploit for your firmware version. So I'm on 11.0, which is what it's set to by default. So I can just leave it on 11.0, but you select whatever firmware version your PS4 is on. Then we've also got some other settings that you can adjust the timeout, wait after pin, groom delay, buffer size and bytes. Normally you don't need to touch this stuff. It's just some PS4s can be problematic with the exploit and require some tweaks to the settings to get it to be more reliable. But for most people, you should be able to just leave these as is. And then we also have auto run pwn on startup, which I also recommend enabling so that every time you reboot your console, it will automatically start running the jailbreak instead of you having to go to this page and select the option to run it manually. So with that, we can update our configuration and we should be good to go there. You can also see it says shut down after jailbreak is another option. Uh, you might want to do this, especially if you are using the Luxbox Pico as an internal mod chip for the PS4. You're going to want it to shut down so that you have access to the Ethernet port on the PS4 so that you can plug into a proper network if you want to after running the jailbreak. But if you want to use the payload server, then you're going to want to keep this off so that the Luxbox Pico continues running after jailbreaking so that you can use the payload server to run additional payloads. So it depends on your configuration there. So just update configuration when you're ready. It should say configuration updated successfully. And now if we go back, we should be all good to go. We can tell it to run Pwn now to actually start running the jailbreaks. So let's hit that. And there we go. It says Pwn will execute shortly. And we're just really waiting to see if it runs. And you'll know it runs because you'll see it says cannot connect to the network, which shows that it is running. Uh, so if we head back and take a look at our settings, we'll head back over to system, system information. So we no longer have an IP address and now it's gone to 42, which is the typical IP address that's used to show that the exploit is running successfully. So all you got to do is wait for the gold hen payload to be loaded successfully. Again, make sure that you have that USB drive plugged in that has the gold hen payload on it if you are running this for the first time. OK, there we go. That is successful. So we've got gold hen 2.4 B18.2 loaded and payload successfully loaded. And again, if you're running this for the first time, you'll also get a notification saying that it copied the gold hen payload from the USB to the hard drive. In my case, I already had it on the hard drive, so it just loaded the one from there. And as soon as the exploit finishes running, when you have the web server version at least, you can see we get our IP address back 192.168.1.2, which basically means that we can now use the payload server. Now, in order to use the payload server, you're going to need to go into the gold hen settings here scroll down to the server settings and enable the bin loader server and what it will do is it will actually use the luckbox pico itself to send the payload over so to do this we can just run the internet browser go back to the ip address of our luckbox pico so from here we can select the payloads we've got 9.00 payloads and we've got 11.0 payloads so in my case it's going to be 11.0 payloads i'll select that and then we have all of the payloads that we can launch here so let's say I want to launch the PS4 debug payload, for instance, we can run that. And you can see we get the notification payload received from localhost. And there we go, we get the payload running. So PS4 debug by Golden, updated by CTN and Sistro. If you want to know what all of these different payloads do, I do actually have a video I made a while ago that goes over all of these different payloads and gives you a brief explanation of each one and how they're useful. So you can check that out as well. I'll leave it down in the video description. But that is essentially how you set up the Luckfox Pico to run the PS4 jailbreak with all of the new features, with its web server for running the payloads, for customizing the settings. And as you can see, it's much easier to set up if you did follow the previous guide, uh, because this time you just flash the pre-built image onto the device, plug it in, access the web server just to enable the settings that you want, and you're up and running with the exploit. And it, this will just run automatically for you now if you enabled uh, the auto launch pwn on startup. That means that whenever we turn off the console and turn it back on again, it will immediately start trying to run the jailbreak. And then once the jailbreak is successful, it will then switch back to run the payload server so that you can run your payloads and customize your settings. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.